to friends and family. It is your girl queen right here. Um, I don't know what I'm gonna talk to y'all about, but um, I got threatened today and said that I needed to make a video. So um, I'm making a video. Anyway, um, hmm, let's see, what can I talk to y'all about? Oh, oh, let me tell you, let me update you. The last time I talked to y'all, I told y'all I had been bleeding for like 50 days straight. So I finally saw my doctor and not just the doctor that was on duty or whatever. And she just, you know, ran some tests or whatever and diagnosed it as, what what did she say? Abnormal uterine bleeding. So an AUB or whatever. But um, it seems what happened is I had uh, started taking the shot, the depo shot a couple of months ago. Mainly to... Um, to stop me from, you know, getting my cycle because, like I said, being in this chair, I'm, like, grounded for, you know, seven days or more um, when my when I'm on my period. So I, I needed to stop that because it was interfering with the quality of my life. Even if y'all don't believe me, yeah, that's what was happening. Yeah, so going back to that, I had to check because I had my, um, my little mini speaker plugged into my phone and I didn't know you know if you guys were getting audio or not so I had to check that out but yeah this little thing right here be rocking I'm tell y'all <laughs> tell y'all right now it be rocking okay um so anyway yeah I went to the doctor I was diagnosed with abnormal uterine bleeding no big deal or whatever and um yeah that wasn't where I was I started taking the shot a couple of months ago I'm telling y'all I'll be having senior moments my bad if I'm repeating myself but um yeah, I took the shot a couple of months ago because I wanted to stop my cycle. And like I was saying, it, I feel like it interferes with the quality of life. So, um, yeah, I had to try to get that taken care of. So anyway, it seems that it appears that that is what caused um, the abnormal bleeding. So what I'm going to do is and I chose for the shot because I've heard bad things about IUDs and, you know, done the research or whatever. And I don't like the outcomes or, you know, the probabilities of it because, um yeah, your girl is on a 2% chance of being paralyzed right now after I have my back surgery. You see, I fall, I fail within that 2%. So, um, so yeah, and I took, opted to take the shot because like I said, when I was younger, um, it worked for me. I stopped having a cycle. So, you know, not, that wasn't what I was intending to do then, but it is what I'm intending to do now. So I am going to, um, you know, she gave me some pills, some, um, uh, some medication I had to take three times a day and um, for a week and then take two for a week, you know, and, well, three until the bleeding stopped. Then I took two for a week and then I took one, one uh, dose for a week and I just ended that today. So we're going to see what's happening with that. Um, like I said, the first six months is kind of iffy, you know, with any kind of birth control, even with the IUD that she was talking about giving me. So I feel like since I'm already about to be in my sixth month with the depo that um, I should just keep rolling and, you know, see what happened from that. If it doesn't do what I'm expecting it to do, then I will go ahead and do the IUD. So that's that. Um, hmm. What else? There was something else I wanted to bring up to you guys. Let me think for a minute because, you know, your girl is old and, uh, yeah, memory be be going in and out. So, hold on. I'm going to be right back when I figure out what I was talking, wanted to talk to y'all about. Okay, anyway, I'm back. I had to go to the door, y'all. I think uh, my neighbors is mad at me for playing my reggae music, but you know what? I don't be saying nothing when they be um, out there playing all that hip-hop that don't make no damn sense. So, you know, I'm going to listen to life. You feel me? I'm going to listen to it, love it, and live it. So they can go on with that. Be up at 8 o'clock in the morning and stuff. And it is, what time is it? It's 8 o'clock at night. Y'all better go on somewhere because, yeah, it is what it is. I know what else I wanted to talk to you guys about. You know what? I never brought y'all up on um, my last video, the Tough Love video with my oldest son. You guys, so I'm going to take you back for a minute. And, um... <clears throat> Remember, I told you that his um, he had left. When he left here, he went to go stay with his dad. It turned out that uh, just before Thanksgiving, his dad had put him out because they got into some altercation or whatever because he wanted him to go and um, do the little guard card deal so he could start working, and my son didn't want to do that. So, yeah, it just went all bad from there. So his dad put him out, <coughs> and um, he hadn't heard from him in a while. So he called me like right after Thanksgiving and he's like, well, you know, have you heard from your son or whatever? And I'm like, no, why? You know, what's up or whatever. And he was like, well, I put his ass out. Excuse my French. I put him out. 
earlier this month. That's my arm on the table, y'all. I am not passing gas, okay? That is my arm on the table. Anyway, yeah, so he's like, well, I put him out um, earlier this month because, you know, it was this, this, that, and another or whatever. So I'm like, oh, okay. And he's like, well, you haven't heard from him? And I'm like, no, you know, really surprised because I thought that he would have came here or he would have called or, you know, something like that. Anyway, so, yeah, he was missing. Well, technically, you can't say he was missing if he got put out. So, you know, that's what the police told me, too. They're like, he can't be missing if you put him out. So, <laughs> y'all be careful. Anyway, so, um, mm, mm, mm. so coming fast forward into, um, like around Christmas time, you know, Christmas passed, we didn't hear from him. New Year's passed, we didn't hear from him. You know, on all this time, me and his dad are calling back and forth like, you heard from him? No, I haven't heard nothing. Well, call me if you hear something. And I'm like, did you hear something? He's like, no. I'm like, okay, well, call me if you hear something. So then, um, like after Christmas, you know, New Year's, I started getting worried. I ain't gonna even lie. You know, I'm like, where the hell is my son? Is he dead? Is he, you know, something that happened to him? Is he in the hospital? What the hell is going on? So I started calling, making phone calls to all kind of hospitals, you know, out in Long Beach, LA area. Um, he wasn't there. His dad was, uh, doing the research to see if maybe he had got picked up on something, which of course he didn't because my son is not that type of son. He's not that type of kid. You know what I'm saying? He's really soft-spoken and, uh, quiet and stuff like that. He don't, he don't, he don't hang out in the streets like that. He don't, he don't hang out like that. So that is what it is. And then he just up and surprised me one day, me and my, um, me and my chunky monkey, uh, was sitting here. And, you know, it was somebody knocking at the door. And I'm like, well, you know, who is it? But I couldn't hear, you know, what they were saying or whatever. And my son went to answer the door. And he's like, who is it? You know, and he heard him. And then he opened the door. And it's like, um, before he opened the door, it was like, it's it's Dalvin, your oldest son, the black sheep of the family. You know, all this putting extras all on it and shit. So, of course, you know, we let him in. And, like, where the hell you been? You ain't calling nobody. You ain't let nobody know you was okay. You know, I said, um, we're like, we, we put you out, you know, or we try to throw you out there to sink or swim because we want you to do something with your life. You know, um, it don't mean we don't love you. We still love you. You know, don't get it twisted. Mama love you. Mama gonna always love you unconditionally. You know what I'm saying? And your dad love you. And, you know, your stepmom love you too. And we were all worried. So, come to find out, the whole time since November before Thanksgiving when his dad put him out, come to find out that he had been in Bakersfield the whole time. The whole time he was in Bakersfield. And it kind of made me mad because um, a couple of weeks before he showed up at the door. Um, my dude ran into one of his friends and actually hit this friend used to live with us. Um, he lived with us for like a year cause he didn't have anywhere to go or whatever. Come to find out that he, you know, my son had stayed with him for a while and it didn't work out or whatever. And, um, and when Will saw him, or my dude saw him, it's not, he didn't say nothing like, oh, well, yeah, you know, Dalvin has been staying with me or Dalvin was here or, you know, I seen him or, you know, he didn't say nothing, you know. And I'm like kind of pissed because that's just like, I don't know, it's just not right. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, like I said, he stayed with us for a whole year. And then come to find out that when my son first came out here, he stayed with him for about two weeks. And he was like, oh, well, you know, you got to give me two, $300 for rent, you know, to stay here or whatever. So my son would do that. He was, it was him and his girlfriend actually. So my son and they would give him the money, give them the money. And then it'd be like, oh, well, you got to leave this weekend or you can't stay here this weekend or, you know, just all kind of little misbehavior, you know, so he ended up leaving and I'm, I'm figuring that's why his, uh, his ex friend, the one that used to stay with us, I'm, I'm thinking that's why he didn't say anything. Cause he know, I would have told him about himself. Cause that's foul. You stayed in my house. I fed you. You know what I'm saying? I ain't never turned you down for a meal. It was never like, Oh, well you got to leave this weekend because this, this, that, and another, you know, or none of that. So yeah, that's, that's just foul. So anyway, yeah, that's what happened to my, um, I was about to say my chunky monkey. That's not my chunky monkey, though. That's my firstborn boo. That's my baby right there. Um, yeah, so tough love. That's what happened to him. And uh, he's been out here in Bakersfield. And, you know, he's came over. He's come over a couple of weekends or whatever and stayed. Um, 
and then him and his girlfriend right now, him and his girlfriend, I guess they have a, they rented a room in the house with, you know, somebody, they rented a room on Craigslist or whatever. They found a room, they rented a room. So, so far they've been cool, you know, and doing what they got to do, maintaining or whatever. So I'm just, yeah, I meant to bring, catch y'all up on that, but I did forget. I have forgotten about that. So yeah, that's what's going on with the tough love. What is this? Part three, I guess. Tough love part three. Oh, and I'm going to be back because it was something else I wanted to talk to you guys about too. Just, um, I need to go take care of this real quick before my bread burn and I'll be back. <laughs> 